Now as we stir at various plants here, I just want to go through my video that I made about three months ago, which was all about propagating begonias. I roughly went over six or seven different methods. It wasn't an exhaustive list. I'm sure there are other ways of propagating begonias out there, but I just wanted to try them for myself and see whether any kind of conclusions could be drawn as to which was the most effective. So what I'm going to do today is roughly go through those methods and look at my results. Now, first of all, I haven't taken care very well, unfortunately, of my propagations, mainly because I don't really want duplicates of what I've already got. So as we go through each method, I'll very, very briefly remind you of how we did that method, and then I'll show you the results of my experiment. So let's go straight to it. So we'll start off with method number one. So let's just remind ourselves of how we did the leaf cone method, and then we'll look at the results. So for our method number one, this is the cone method, and this is begonia silver lace. So I've just cut a leaf off there, and all I'm going to do is remove the center. So I'm going to cut around there. I'm going to expose those veins, and I don't need to do it with anything fancy. I just simply cut and tear right the way along the center like that. So that's going to go in like that. And all I need to do is just kind of move the media up so that it's in contact there. Okay, you're looking here at the leaf comb method. So I would say the very flimsy leaved ones aren't really fans of this kind of method. Uh, I think the Griffon didn't work very well, but you can see <laughs> not very much going on in there, but there is some definite growth there. Definite growth there, nothing there. That one's completely dead. I think that was the Griffon. And here we have the Silver Lace, and that worked pretty well too. As I say, these have been neglected. I've not been looking after them at all, and that's really mainly why they've not done that well over the three to four months. It is a slow process, I think, whatever method you use, but you can see the results of that one. So definitely worth a try, the Leaf Comb method. So method two was the Leaf Stalk method. So let's just quickly remind ourselves of how to do the Leaf Stalk method. Right, for method two, this is called the leaf method, a leaf cutting method, or that's what I'm giving it a name of. So basically what you do is the bit that was left, and you don't want that to be too long. I'm going to do it about four or five centimetres, and you basically stick it into the pot. So this is the pot from my leaf stalk method, and you can see out of, I think there was four in here, then the silver lace definitely worked. Uh, this one down here, the silver jewel has worked, but it's been very, very slow, probably needed repotting. That one didn't work though, that was Listada, and I think there was another one there that's completely died off. So leaf stalk method, mixed results, but does work for the most part. Method three is what I'm calling the stem tip cutting method. So that's more of your traditional kind of a cutting where you would take a stalk and a leaf node. So let's just quickly remind ourselves how we did that. Okay, for the next method, we're down on the floor. So we're looking at this begonia listada. Now this method more closely resembles your traditional stem tip cuttings where you would normally cut just below a leaf node. And you can see here, that we just have an ordinary shoot, the end of a shoot. So for method number three, I've only actually managed to find two growing tips that would satisfy the criteria for a stem tip cutting. So you can see I've cut below a leaf node, but there is still a little bit of stem on. And the same with that, we don't need to worry about that. So as you can see here, all doing really, really well. Listada particularly did well on that, kept most of its leaves, in fact, all of them, I think. And again, silver lace did really well there. I know it doesn't look like silver lace at the moment, but that's what it will indeed develop into, I think, over time. Um, we've got silver jewel there, that worked pretty well as well. I must admit, this was the method that I thought would more likely work than any of the others. So this is your traditional stem tip cutting method. So that worked pretty well with all the ones that I tried. So for method four, well, I kind of split this up into two methods. I did the wedge method and the flat leaf method. So let's take a quick look at how to do that. Okay, method number four is the same as method number one, where you cut it into a cone, but this time you actually separate them out and call them wedges. So the only difference here is that this isn't all joined together in a cone. So they would then go into the media with the vein 
pointing downwards into or in contact with the media. Okay, for the next method, we'll call this the flat leaf method. We're going to cut off the main stalk, the petiole of the leaf. And all we're going to do here is cut through each of the main veins, just ever so slightly, just a little tiny cut. You can do it with a knife, you can actually probably do it with your fingers. And it's that little cut that results in hopefully new plants and I'll do exactly the same with the remaining leaf that I've got here. Right so you can see here that all the wedges that I put around the outside none of them worked. Now I only did that with Begonia Griffon and it may just be that the leaf was too flimsy but out of the flat leaf methods all three have worked particularly well. So the silver lace which does seem to be working well in all methods and uh, we've got the silver jewel there and uh, just starting to sprout down here the listada that worked well too. I really didn't think this one would work because I've seen various ones on the internet where they've all rotted off well mine didn't mine worked pretty well now the water method I'm not going to show you this one it was basically just sticking a leaf stalk attached to a leaf in some water now first of all let me say this is the same water that's been in here three months exactly the same water and yes it did develop roots but as you can see the leaf has actually died off now what happened there is it did develop some new leaves at the bottom but because it's been neglected then they've just died and rotted probably through stagnant water Water. But I do believe, now I don't know how true this is, but I did read that if you do just a leaf stalk and it does develop some roots, it will never develop further beyond that. I don't know how true that is. If anybody's ever tried that, please let me know in the comments. So the water method works, but why bother if you're not actually going to get any shoots other than that leaf? So that's the water method. And the final method was the rhizome method where you divided a rhizome. Let's take a quick look at that. So for my final method, this is the small rhizomatous group. And it's as, just as it sounds really, you're going to locate a rhizome and you can see one there traveling along in that direction. And I'm simply going to cut it off. Easier said than done with one hand, but you must make sure that it's got some growth nodes on it. It's no good if it's not got any growth nodes on it. So I'm going to cut that off straight down and I'll probably have to, there we go. I've managed to do it with one hand, fantastic. So what I'm going to do here is remove some of these leaves. And the, the idea is that you just simply push it down into the compost. And that is simply going to go there on the compost and I simply push it in and cover it over a little bit. So I cut part of the rhizome off of this one. This was Begonia Bowerai. As expected, worked pretty well because you've already got the rhizome, which is in actual fact the root. So it's not like it actually has to develop roots. It's already done, isn't it? So that's pretty much a 100% success rate if you get a rhizome. Can't really fail with that one. So in terms of conclusions, I would say that the majority of methods work pretty well. The only one that didn't work for me was the wedge method, and that was pretty much because I only did it with one begonia. I happened to use this begonia griffon over here, sometimes called begonia pegasus, and it just happened to be a very flimsy leaf. I expect if you use thicker, more succulent type leaves, they're going to, and succulent I mean by just juicy and thick, I don't mean actual succulents like cacti. Uh, they are going to be more likely to work. I do believe that Begonia size Moriae over here, or Longiciliata as it's now called, that does particularly well from wedge cuttings. So I think it's just dependent on the Begonia that you use. Obviously I've not done every single group of Begonia here, I've just used the ones that I've got. So in terms of all the other methods, and I'm going to draw some kind of rule of thumb here, I would say in the first instance, try the, the leaf type method. So we're talking about either the cone or the leaf stalk where you actually take a stalk of the leaf and just cut off around the edge or the flat leaf method or the wedge method I would do that in the first instance simply because it's the cheapest for the parent plant you're not going to actually lose much of the plant if that doesn't work then I would go on to the more likely to work methods like the stem tip cutting method or the division of rhizome methods so that's what I've come up with after my experiments let me know what your experiments have shown in the comments down below and if you really enjoy begonias then take a quick look at this video here which gives you a brief tour around the ones that I owned at the time that I made the video of course I've added a few more to my collection since so you'll have to watch other videos for that but I think you'll enjoy taking a look at these and that's it for now I'll see you on the next one bye